There was re they they had models, but they weren't. There wasn't a lot of work for them because no, there was. They had models. They've always had black models. What'd you say? We're gonna start at ten. Okay. They've always been there. I tell everybody that you could not have a, so a society. I'm also known as the original runway diva, and you are watching Model Behavior. Class is officially in session. Today, my guest lecturer, Renal White. Yes? Start over. It okay. Hey everybody, my name is Sharon Quinn and I'm also known as the original Runway Diva and you are watching Model Behavior. Class is officially in session. Today my guest lecturer, Renal White, returns to continue his story about his unparalleled 40 plus year reign in the fashion industry. Welcome back to Model Behavior, Thank you. Renal White. Thank you. So I'm just going to continue because I was, I was stunned into silence uh, <laughs> during the first episode. So. I, I want to go over these first that you have so that we don't run out of time. Yeah. You were the first African-American model to appear on the cover of GQ magazine, first African-American male, African male model to endorse uh, a white man's hair product, which was Vitalis. I remember Correct. that. Yes, okay. And uh, the first African male model to work for American de designers Bill Blass, Calvin mm -hmm. Klein, Ralph Lauren, Jeffrey Banks, and Donna Karen. Mm -hmm. All right, so... When we last left you, you you had just gotten signed right. with Wilhelmina. Yes. yes. So now between that period of you signing and all of this happening, mm -hmm. was that quick or did it take some time? It took some time. You know, I mean, I had to change my life. I had to turn it around. I had to find a place to live in New York. I was commuting back and forth from Jersey to New York. I had to uh, take some time off from my office job because I didn't want to let it go because I was help supporting my family. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to think about, you know, what was going to happen to my family if I, if I didn't contribute, you know. So I, there are a lot of things that weighed on my mind that I had to spend some time with mm -hmm. and only I could make those decisions. So I decided that um, opportunities like this don't come along very often. I was young, I had nothing to lose. If it didn't work out, I could always hopefully go back to the company I was working for, mm -hmm. which was Western Electric okay. in Kearney, New Jersey. And they seemed to like me. And they wanted to send me to Rutgers in the evenings to uh, uh, become more uh, involved in the business aspect mm -hmm. of, of working for them. So I decided to um, work for a couple of years and try to do this modeling, commuting, and it worked somewhat, but it, it, my heart wasn't really into my studies. And I was failing because I was... Oh, you were going to school. I was going to school, and, too. And trying to... Yeah, and, trying wait, to you model, were going yeah. to school, mm -hmm. still working. Still working. And doing the, and doing the modeling, modeling thing. Too, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. That's a lot. And there's something, something you had to give. So I just said, you know what? I'm going to go for broke. I'm going to try the modeling. So I dropped out of school. Um, and I said, Mom, I'm going to get a job, part-time job. Don't worry about it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I cleaned the slate as far as Jersey is concerned and focused in on moving into New York and getting a job and to build a portfolio because Wilhelmina was sending me out. And I had to look the part, mm -hmm. so I had to kind of really shape up and lose weight. You know, I had to cut my hair down, make myself a little more commercial-like. That's just, well, let me just ask you this, because you mm -hmm. said, now you, of course you had to test and do all of that stuff right. that, you know, right. models right. starting out do. Exactly. Did they, did they send you 
to your their photographers? Did you did they test you for free or did you have to pay for that? Or they some how were did for that go? free and some I had to pay for. Most of the people that they sent me out for because they had never worked with a young black man before gave it to me for nothing. They gave me their 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 expertise. And the only thing I had to do was maybe pay pay for some prints or right. something like that. Yeah, we don't have to do that no more. Yeah. But I remember those days. Of right, right, paying exactly. for prints yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But now, um, oh, I hate when that happens to mm -hmm. me. So you, you're doing the photo shoots, mm -hmm. and how did you know what to do in front of the camera? That's now okay. Now this is interesting because I devised in my mind that modeling is silent acting it's which like it act, is which it is so if you have something working in your mind um you can express that through very slight movements because there's not much that's demanded from men when we get in front of the camera we don't have to make great shapes we don't have to like uh, uh leap or jump or anything like that we really have to just be pillars of coolness stand there, mm -hmm. you know, and just be suave and debonair. But within that, you have to have something working in your mind so it comes out through your eyes. Mm -hmm. And because I wanted to be an actor, and I had spent my youth looking at all these images, you know, uh, at the movies on Saturday, it was a pretty natural transition for me to become, to step out of the normal world mm -hmm. and to get into the world of fantasy and it wasn't hard for me to um, express myself in front of the camera um, it took a while before my portfolio was presentable enough for me to go out and people would respond and people would say you know what you should see this photographer because he's testing and he's to work for me and now he's looking to test models, and I think you, you know, you, you guys could work something out or um, whatever. And so my experience became um, more and more. My book was building up, mm -hmm. was stronger. I was going out. I was meeting advertising agencies. I was meeting more and better photographers. I was going up to places like. Uh, Macy's and Bloomingdale's and uh, 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 eventually Saks Fifth Avenue, um, Lord and Taylor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was going up to these real Orbox, Kleins. <laughs> God. Yeah, well, I worked for all those because they were in New York mm -hmm. in the late 60s and early 70s. You know uh, Naomi Sims? Remember mm -hmm. Naomi Sims, the yes, goddess? I, mm -hmm. I worked with Naomi Sims for an Orbox show. That was my first, one of my first shows. Naomi and I were in it. So to have a career as long as you've had, you've had to have worked with some of, if not all, of the greats the great, at some point. The greatest minds that came out of the 60s, you know, all of those names that changed the look of photography. Um, like now we have uh, uh, Anna Wintour, but then it was Carrie Donovan. I don't know if you remember her. Carrie Donovan was, was like the um, goddess of Vogue. And, you know, I knew her, you know, I knew Scavulo, I met Scavulo. Um, all of these, uh, I, I used to go up to Irving Penn. I never worked for him, but they would send me up there hoping mm -hmm. that he would just shoot my hand or something just to work, had Penn in your mm -hmm. portfolio. But, uh, I mean, Scavulo gave me beautiful things. Um, um, Bill Blass used me in a show. Uh, for the first time, and, and <laughs> funny story is that when I walked down his runway, I had a patch under my eye because the night before, a dog bit me in my face. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm doing Bill Blast tomorrow, and I got a dog's scar, teeth, uh, under my eye. But it was cool. I, I walked down, I had a little band, bandage on, uh, bandage, and um, nobody said anything. But, I mean... <laughs> you think, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> This is, I mean, no, really. Yeah, that would not have happened for me. <laughs> it, it was, I, I was at a friend's house, and I was, like, you know, playing with his dog, and all of a sudden, the dog just nipped my face. And I, I went, oh, my God. Oh. Oh, okay. I'll be okay. I'm not worried. I got a show, but I'm okay. Give me some ice. <laughs> so, wow. So all I right. walked down the show in, uh, with a little scar. Tell me about this first cover. How did that happen, and what did you feel 
when you saw that cover? You, with which, you on. which one? The GQ cover. Is okay, that, was that your very first cover? No, no. I My first cover was uh, a trade magazine's uh, menswear. Uh, I, did, I, did, I did two covers for them. Uh, no, actually three. Three covers. I did, uh, my first cover was with Ramona Saunders on a beach, shot by a black man, black photographer, and art director was black. And so, I mean, it was like unheard of. And so that was my first cover. That was cover of menswear. And that was like 1970. Then after that, um, I shot a cover about models, again, for menswear. They were talking about, they, they labeled it flesh trade or something. <laughs> and I was the only, I was the only black face in like a circle of, of white models and there was like maybe 12 of us and we all were around this one beautiful blonde girl. But I was on it. I was, I was there. I was, you, you couldn't miss it. <laughs> you couldn't miss it. And um, then there was, um, what else, what else was there? But GQ. GQ didn't come, I, I worked for GQ starting in like 71. They were very, very receptive to me, and uh -huh. they started giving me um, uh, small coverage, but I was in the magazine, mm -hmm. you know? And then they started using me more and more, and Esquire started using me, and the, the pictures got bigger, and the, the, the garments became a lot more interesting. Um, Do you remember what year this, this GQ cover was? It was 79. What was the feedback from that cover? It was amazing, but I was not the, uh, there was a black man on it in 78, I, 70, 77. Okay. Urs Anthus was, was on it. But Urs is from Europe. So this then this Europe. is accurate. This is accurate because this is where, this is um, my country, this, my people built this country and for them not to honor a man who is from that heritage and to put a European, which is fine, but somehow I just thought, wait a minute, what about the, the black men here whose uh, our, our history is about 400 years of slavery? They don't care about Giving that. you free money, free economy in the world. They don't care about that. No, they don't. Yeah. They, they don't, don't care about that yeah. at all. So I always want to give Urs his, 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 his props because he was the first black man. That was 77. Mm -hmm. You know, he was half, I think, uh, maybe um, his mother might be, might be from Brussels. His father could have been African. Okay. But my, my heritage is here. Mm -hmm. My people helped put this country on the map, made it possible for other European countries to come here. My ancestors building this country. So that's what made me so proud that, that I could represent this country and everything it's gone, gone through and against our people. And here I am on the cover in 1979. How so, did that cover make you feel? I was, oh, Sharon, I was Because like, I've been walking around. <laughs> 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 did you see me on the cover of GQ? <laughs> I've been walking around with that yeah, on, a, uh, yeah. on my neck. I got to, I must say, I made, a, I made a concerted effort to every day I stepped out of my apartment building that I was looking clean. I was put together. I had proud. I had accomplished something that was monumental, and I wanted... I wanted not only my street and my block to know it, but I wanted the world to know that, hey, I represent, and if I can do it, you can do it. So it was a, it was a monumental month, because they even had subway posters of it. And not too many people wrote on them. They didn't scribble anything on them. Man. <laughs> now you, now, okay, so you, you, you have this career, and you're still working. You told me off camera, God willing, next year will be your 50th year in this industry, correct? Yes. Now, do you see how the business has changed from, say, 68 to now? Mm -hmm. do, you have, do you have any thoughts on, on, on the business now and, and where you see it going in the future? All I can say is that um, there's no stopping progress, and things are done differently now. I might not be the man to talk to about it. I mean, I'm, I get my information bits and pieces, but 
the young people starting now, um, they do it through social media. I don't quite understand it, but and they believe in it. And that's a great detriment to the business, if you ask me, because you don't hone your skills. You don't hone your craft. You don't learn anything. You're just taking selfies and putting them up, and yeah. people are booking you off of that. So you're not really doing the work. No, no. I, you know, I used to poo-poo um, going to a modeling school, but you, there is something that does happen when you do go and you have to pay for it. You t there's a takeaway. With this, I don't know. I mean, it's not my, it's not my generation to understand it all. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a. I'm a seasoned citizen who, uh, senior citizen also, who tr I'm trying my best to keep up. But it's a different way of, uh, it's a different way that the modeling world operates. Oh, absolutely. And I, I don't know that many people. I really don't. I mean, I, I mentor, so I get information back from my, my mentees, you know, so um, it's very challenging. You mentor through this, the, uh the Loris, Loris Sport for Good Foundation? I used to, there, not anymore. Okay. I do it through, I do it through um, friends of friends of friends, like guys from my generation. Their sons might be interested in modeling, and they'll say, well, if you go up to New York, I used to work with Renald. Give him a call. He's a good guy. Maybe he can give you some pointers. You know? Really? So, yeah. Yeah, but I can't do that for everybody in the world. Oh, no, this is why this yeah, show yeah. is happening. Right, exactly. And I'm, I don't know about you, I'm selective about who I mentor. I am, too. Because you're not going to waste my time. No, I can't. Yeah, and I, then yeah. six months from now, you off doing something else. Right, Now right, you're right. wasting my time, and I can't yeah. get it back. And I know that you're young, and you need to express yourself, but there is, a, you have to commit to it. Either you're going you're gonna to do it or you're not going to do it. Again, I don't waste my time. You know, so um, I've been pretty good about, you know, um, some of the models that I've worked with, and they've gone on to do good things. They've gone on to be actors and maybe photographers themselves. That's a good segue. Acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've been doing <laughs> yeah. that for a while. For a while, yes, I have. Now I did, love it. Did, it the, did the acting sort of happen simultaneously with the fashion? Because you said you always wanted to be an actor. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I was fantasizing when I was a kid going to the movies on Saturday with my older brother, and he leave me alone and I just like get all absorbed in Humphrey Bogart and you know and you know uh, all those uh, John Wayne and all those great black and white movies I used to see you know at the Rialto in Newark New Jersey when I was a kid so you're going you you going back <laughs> I know <laughs> but all of that has an effect on you it makes you it it, it it makes you become you know that you just can't settle for the ordinary that there's something unique about you that you have to satisfy, you know? And so when I moved to New York, I immediately sought out the best acting teachers because even though I acted in high school and I did plays and I was creative and I, that whole football thing that I told you mm -hmm. about, you know, I mean, I played for a year and that was enough. I needed to get on stage and do theater. You know, I had to, I had to create, I had to draw. I even tried to sing. It was all these creative things that my parents Anything? had. No, not sing by myself. <laughs> <laughs> you say you tried to sing. That's how I said. Do, do you sing? No, I don't. I don't sing like that. No, no. But I was. I was. I wanted to sing. I wanted to play an instrument. Instrument, but I. I couldn't do everything. Mm -hmm. You know. But I. There was this creative, creative uh, uh, source in me that needed to, needed to be honored. You played Malcolm X. I did. And when the chickens come home to root. Yes, I took mm -hmm. it on tour. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've done like classical acting. Oh yeah. In '90, I did Julius Caesar set in Africa, and I was one of the first, I think, of the actors from you know that came after me to cross over and do classical acting to really be serious about the craft, and I. Did Julius, I played Julius Caesar, and it was an amazing experience. I did it at the New Eurekan Poets Cafe wow. with Ron Neal, and we did it down in North Carolina. And then I did, um, I did Chickens in like 93, took, about, took it on tour for Black History Month. I was in Guiding Light for six years. I saw. Yeah, the reoccurring character. I used to. Yeah, I, I was in Bill, Bill Gunn's movie. 
personal problems. I don't know if you know Bill. He was on the Cosby Show. He played one of uh, Bill's uh, Earl Hyman's best friend because Earl Hyman I know played, who Earl Hyman is. played yeah. Bill's dad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I studied with Earl, and then I got a chance to do um, Bill's movie, Personal Problems, back in 1980. Are you so, still acting? Oh yes. Oh, that's my first love. Yeah, I love it. And you live yeah. in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. You should come down here and get your own show, the Renault White Show. Somebody will pick it up. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it's easy. <laughs> now, um, so let's let's come to the present day, mm -hmm. and uh, you just did that cover or the the, the faster spread with Tracy Africa. In yes. Which magazine was that? Was Vogue Italian? Italian. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. 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 How did that come about? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I have no idea. Um, Pat, who was the creative director on it, uh, was looking for um, some guys that had some, some, some years on them. And there's not a lot of us left from the 70s, at least not living in New York, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and my agent called and said, there's an Italian Vogue uh, that's shooting, and they're going to be shooting an all-black issue. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to send them your name and your photograph. Are you, are you up for it? And I said, of course. And um, lo and behold, I got it. And that was recent, wasn't recent, it? Recent, yeah, yeah. That was back in the summer. Those pictures was, they were fire. I saw them. They were really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah, and Tracy was amazing to work with. She's also from New York. She's a I know, I had person. her on a, yeah. a while ago, and yeah. her story is a fascinating yeah, one. Yeah, But it, 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 what it did was confirm for me that if it's meant for you, mm -hmm. no one can take it away. No, absolutely right. They can delay right. it, right. but they can't take it from yeah. you. Yeah. And what a glorious time she's having right about now. She deserves it. She really does. And you're going to be fine as well. Thank you. Um, but I, I, that makes me segue into your book, this book that you, and it is, it, it's going to be quite a book. Thank you. I, I, Because I, you only telling me a little bit. You yeah, just giving me a true. glimpse. Yeah. So yeah. I can only imagine what 50 yeah, years I looks know. like. Right, right. It's a lot of prayer, meditation, um, going to the gym, um, surrounding yourself with uh, positive people. Um, finding a hobby. For me, um, martial arts really became something I never ever in my life thought that I would learn to love. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I don't, I, I, I have nothing to prove. I don't, you know, I don't get in people's faces. That's not me. But once I crossed over into that world of martial arts and met the people that were attracted to it like I was, and and fascinated by what it could do, I said, I could, this is going to be with me the rest of my life. What was it that attracted you to it? Well, first of all, it's the people. You have to be of a certain, uh, your heart has to be in the right place. It's such a, a giving, giving expression of how to um, protect yourself. Mm -hmm how to um, work with other people. You become a teacher. Um, the phys physical demands make your body um, feel and be the best, best it could be. Mm -hmm. um, the people themselves who cross over into the world of martial arts are so unique that you build this family. And you're all working towards the same goals, to be the best you can, and you can see that by the belt collar that you wear around your waist, mm -hmm. you know. Um, when you go up for a promotion, everybody's there to support you, to let you know what a great job you did. You might not feel that you did your best, but we know how difficult it is, and we believe that you... And it is difficult. It's challenging. It really is challenging, yes, yeah. So I've been doing that, and that's been a wonderful bridge for me at this point in my life. And how long have you been doing it? 17 years. It's quite a bit, of, and it teaches you discipline too. It could, does. Doesn't it? It does, yeah, yeah. Because I never know. I mean, you know, I mean, I used to work, there was one point where I was working back in the 80s, 
And my agent at the time was Zoli, and they were the greatest men's agency in the world. Yeah, I remember Zoli. Yeah, yeah. They would send me up, like if uh, they came in, a casting came in for um, a white male, mm -hmm. they would say, oh, he's not available, can we suggest Ronald White? So I used to go up for what white models used to go up for, which was unheard of. And just getting it. And getting it. Mm -hmm. And then at one point, I was the highest paid model in New York, which pretty much means the world. New York is the center of the world. Wow. Mm -hmm. For a short time there, I was like, I can't believe this. So what do you think, what do you, how do I put this? What do you attest your longevity to in this industry? Because not a lot of people have a 50-year career. Yeah. A lot of people don't have five-year careers, right. and you've managed to do it. Well, I'm mean, still in my the 40s. I'm still. Uh, it's up to God. Okay. You know we're one. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna put it out there. You're okay. gonna make it to that 50th year. Thank you. I want to make put that book out there. That's what I want to do. That's that's my goal is to get my story out there, and inspire other other young minds, you know, to go go out there and and just it's waiting for you. It's out there, especially men of color, especially now when, you know, we, we're having such division in this country and we have somebody that's running this country and everybody's like thinking it's... And it feels like we're going backwards. Yeah, it does. So that's, that's a, ooh, that just brought up a good question for mm -hmm. me. So now you've been struggling, or we have been struggling with this since we've been on this planet. Yes. This is just the nature of how things roll. Right. So, in 2017, with our current uh, him mm -hmm. in office mm -hmm. and everything being rolled back, mm -hmm. do you see that happening? Because that was the reason you burst onto the scene in the first place. Right. So do you see in, in that industry, do you see it going backwards again? I, I don't know. I think it might be a little too soon. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I think... That would be a big mistake. Absolutely. It would be a huge mistake because then there would be more blame that he doesn't need. I mean, because, you know, um, he can say these things, but when it comes to the economy and money, you know, we, 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 we just have to st stay strong and demand that our images are seen and that uh, we're we're part of the zeitgeist in this in in this this country, um, despite everything that's going on with these factions who are you know trying to destroy our spirit by killing not only white people, just killing people, it, yeah, just killing people. Like we going back to fifty eight. Yeah, we're I mean, not going back to that. What is going on? Every time, every couple of months, there's a mess killing. And I'm like, oh, this is, this is the modern world? Exactly. It's like, we, how could we get as far as, we had eight years yeah. of, of, the, of a first black president. Right. Well, not technically, but first black president. <laughs> <laughs> and now you have an administration that comes in, and their whole goal is to reverse everything mm -hmm. that this black man did. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how, uh, how can it help but to permeate everything? How do we avoid that? that? That's scary to me. Yeah. Well, we have to, you know, as always, be vocal. Stand up, you know, get, you know, get uh, leaders to speak up, to get attention, to uh, say, look, this is happening. It's not right. We know what you're trying to do. You can't take this away from us. Because if you do, it, it, it's, it's the, we'll have so many people Mounting a a a uh, uh, it's going to be really yeah, bad to get an impeachment going because we're not going to stand for it. We're not, you know. Yeah, I see civil war in the streets if if we keep going this yeah. way. But you hear the music. We're almost out of time. But before I sign off, you you're on social media, right? I am. I'm on Instagram. You're on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Are you on Facebook? I am, but I don't really do too much with Facebook. 
Okay, that's how we're going to get that book deal. Oh, we, we, okay. Yeah. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. So we're yes. almost out of time. <laughs> I'd like to thank my guest, Renard White, for sharing his industry knowledge with us again today. Now, before I go, as always, I want to leave you with a few thoughts. I want you to remember that you can't change the game until you first learn the game. Always surround yourself with positive people and positive things. Do what you love and love what you do. And be who you are. But be who you are tastefully. Always have a little class about yourself. Now don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. And if you missed an episode of Model Behavior, now you can view the previous episodes on our YouTube channel. Just Google Model Behavior with Sharon Quinn and all of the previous episodes will come up. Thanks for watching Model Behavior and I'll see you guys next week. Class is officially dismissed. Bye y'all.